Hey, how we doing, everybody? Morning, everyone. Joe here. Kevin. Um, the last episode of The West Wing, I think, is a personal favorite for me. It was a good time. It, it was one of the, like, levity episodes that we get every once in a while. And of those levity episodes, it was my favorite one of the, the lighter episodes. It had a lot going for it. Yeah, right? yeah. It, it had fantastic dialogue, as always. Um, it had a big sweeping shots in a ballroom. <laughs> Great. And yeah. it had most of our favorite characters kind of buddied up. Yeah, um, I, conversations with another. Yeah, uh, that's going to be a highlight, I think, of the show for me is mm-hmm. Lord John Marbury and Toby having a drink together, fantastic, and, and talking out the, the talking out the conflict between Ireland and uh, England. Yeah, um, uh, and also, you know, I think one of the big set pieces of the show um, would be the, the the four women having a conversation. Yeah, I, I love that too. Yeah, and I, I feel like we made a big thing of it a lot this season is Sorkin's. Um, the conversation about Sorkin and how he writes women. Right. Um, if anybody wants to criticize him now, I would be like, well, just watch this episode. Watch Dead Irish Writers. You know what I mean? For sure. Because I thought um, it was handled very well. I mean, it was because if, if you want to roll your eyes at the episode where um, Sam makes a comment against Ainsley and they have right, bring her right. in to kind of explain it. Right. You can roll your eyes at that. Sure. I understand it completely. Absolutely. However, I thought this last episode was so nuanced. It was so well written. And honestly, like, it was just a great. I mean, I, I want to say it's a highlight for Donna's character, honestly. Right. It was one of her strongest moments. For no, sure. it, it was. I, I love the fact that, you know, that, keep in mind, when this show was made mm-hmm. was was before we kind of identified and understood what uh, mansplaining was yeah. as like as like a, a really kind of gross activity that we've all been kind of guilty of on yeah, some for level. Sure, 100%. Um, and even though it wasn't really a, a thing we understood yet, the show managed to avoid it, right? Yeah. Abby needed to be told, hey, man. You paying a price for what you did isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's not. You're, we, we, uh, you know, we're proud of your husband for taking ownership of his mistake. Mm-hmm. Maybe you should too. Yeah. And she got that message and did it. And she did it without a, a, a man saying, you know, hey, yeah, it wasn't Babish telling her. It wasn't, you know, Jed telling her. It, it wasn't Sam going off on her or Toby. It's somebody who's kind of on the outside. The lowest ranking person in the room. Exactly. By far said, you know, you you did do something wrong mm-hmm. and abby without without arguing with her right she had every right to smack on her around because of their disparity in position yeah and she didn't she just said you're right we're good i i i messed up and i like that she didn't smack her around you know what i mean she wasn't like for sure how right yeah to tell me that you know what i mean how dare you talk to me yeah. yeah like that yeah and sometimes it does take somebody on the outside to say that because you know i mean Donna understands the, 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 the severity of a situation in the White House. Obviously, it's the White House. Right. But for her to be like, I'm just going to say this. You know what I mean? Donna Moss, our favorite Canadian. <laughs> she is a Canadian. Yeah. The old Canada bit at the end was hilarious, too. <laughs> it was pretty, pretty nice. That was the only way she got any retribution back on Donna, was yeah. just playing O Canada. Yeah. It was it, it was a, a really great episode. And I, I like where we're going with, with Amy and yes. Josh also. Great couple. Um, I am assuming... As Amy does that, and as Donna warned, that somehow, some way, Josh is going to blow it up because that seems to kind of be his mo um, when it when it comes to personal relationships. Yeah, um, I mean, I don't know, obviously, um, but Josh seems to be wired to be that guy. He doesn't want to be, but I mean, let's face it, you know, he we kind of had him there a little bit with Joey Lucas, right? Mm-hmm. We thought that they were going to become a couple, mm-hmm. and that didn't happen. No. Um, but I mean, you bring in, you know, a powerhouse of an actress to kind of pair with him, you know, and and you write a character that um, that that's a, that's a, a a power equal to him as well. Yeah. Um, and you so you kind of take away that Josh, the girl he's dating, yeah. disparity, and I, I think it works. I I really do. That you know, <clears throat> Joey was an outside pollster that they would hire now and then. And so Josh was always kind of in charge of her. Yeah. Mandy was there. Josh was always kind of in charge of her. And that was a disaster from the beginning. Yeah. Um, was, just in terms of planning and execution. Um, but I feel like uh, with Amy, there's a there's more balance there, also, which makes it more, make more sense. They're in the same city most of the time. Absolutely. Right. Joey's always traveling. Yeah, She's that's always true. Gone, that's you know, true. So it doesn't really work out. Um, but, you know, they... One, they have great chemistry, the actors, you know what I mean? And also, like, her character apparently was you know, designed to be, you know, a, a relationship with Josh. Um, with, with Josh. And that's – it's great. They're actually they, – it's like right under the show, and then all of a sudden Josh is in a relationship. They've built it up a little bit, you know? Yeah. Um, They've given them some history. They, know, they really have. Um, they threw in the fact that she was dating another guy when they started dating. Yeah. And I, I don't know how that works. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? I, 
That's me. <laughs> yeah, my Midwestern sensibilities is yeah. shouldn't they both be single before they start dating? Exactly. Um, but you know, what do I what do I know? Yeah. <laughs> Progressive show. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Uh, we do want to welcome a few more patrons to Sky versus the last day or so, guys. So Sky Deceit, uh, Ab- Abrima Dean, Vincent, and Devin Murphy, thanks so much, five guys, and welcome. We're really glad you're here with us. Thank you. We sure are. And if you guys are watching us on YouTube for the first time, excuse me, uh, welcome to our channel. If you guys like the like button for us, please leave us a comment down below and hit that subscribe button so you can stay up to date on the new content we have coming your way. Yeah, yeah. and if you'd like to see a full reaction to this and everything else we've watched or currently watching, uh, please check out a link in the description below to our Patreon page. Mm-hmm. If you're watching us on YouTube, we are four episodes ahead over right now on Patreon. So after YouTube, you can jump over there and see the next four. Oh, yeah. You will need to sync and watch along on your own device or streaming service. You're only going to see and hear us over there. Yep. We are on Mac. We are also watching uh, 30 Rock. My brain shut off for a second. There. 30 Rock is a Patreon exclusive. Yes, right. we are. We'll be doing that later today. Absolutely. And right after this. Great. Good morning, Mr. President. Good to have you with us. Good. I wonder if going to be playing the U.S. Poet Laureate here. It would be great if Maya Angelou was on this, actually on the show. <laughs> it? We want to talk about controlling our destiny through innovation instead of relying so heavily on foreign oil. Governor Robert Ritchie of Florida, the likely Republican Which is looking to meet him right, yeah. for sure. He says that we should be exploring the Arctic National Wildlife Reserve. Bringing oh, this has been a big thing for us for Will decades. Will this be a hotly contested campaign topic? I just got faxed a letter from Tabitha Fortas. She gets to chastise the administration for backing off its commitment to banning landmines. I'm sure. I'll do it. I thought Sam, because he's more familiar with landmines. I'll talk to him. Why? Yeah. Is it possible you've got a little touch of the poet? <laughs> I would like a little touch of the poet. Yes. <laughs> oh, Toby. Smiling. Four, three, Happiness three. is my default position. <laughs> I, yeah. What about clean coal? Clean coal Doesn't is exist. a term that yeah. posters came up with because it pulls right. higher than regular coal. I mentioned Governor Ritchie's book because I was hoping you'd rise to the bait. There'll be plenty of bait in September, October. What's your ruling <laughs> so far? I don't know, Leslie. I think we might be talking about a 22 caliber mine and a 357 Magnum world. When you said that just now, you were hot. They've got it on B-roll. Yes. Oh, that's going to get out there. They just called Richie stupid. Well, that kind of goes back to Toby. what Toby was saying about speak your mind. Yeah. You're not plain spoken. Um, Honestly, it's going gonna... to come up in press conferences. And if I was CJ, I'd be like, maybe the president thinks he's stupid. Okay, so like today, <laughs> that wouldn't be that big of a deal. But yeah. back then, they're like, oh my god. Yeah, <laughs> in a post-Donald Trump world, you yeah. can say anything about somebody else and no one would blink an eye. Well, now, this might just kick off a fight. It yeah. might get really, really fiery around there. Around, yeah, yeah. Man. It was eight seconds. It was his yeah. tenth interview. He didn't see that the green light was... Right. What do you think you're gonna get? Is the president saying Governor Ritchie's stupid? Yes. Yeah, exactly. No. Yes is the only answer to that question. I've got 80 boys and girls in there who don't make the distinction, and if I pretend Bobby Ritchie's a nuclear physicist... Then don't answer it. We're focusing on energy independence this week. No, I can try a non-apology apology. Try it. The president, president didn't, know the didn't mic was realize on. Yeah. the camera was hot. It's the classic Washington scandal. We screwed up by telling the truth. Right, yeah. Let's try not to do that that much. <laughs> This is a good writing. What is it? LemonLimon.com. What is it? It's your fan site. Um? You have fans, Josh. Not many of them from the looks of it, but what they lack in numbers, they more than make up for in fervor. I'm going to be reprimanded tomorrow night on the House floor. For what? It's not nice to call people dumb. CJ, was the president saying that Governor Ritchie isn't up to the job of being president? The president didn't realize the camera was hot. CJ, has he made the same kind of remarks in private? There's a reason they call it private, Stuart. Governor Ritchie is calling on the president to apologize. Yes. Will he? Uh, it's the next day. They're still going. Yeah. He'll apologize to yeah. me. The Ritchie Doesn't camp work, is also though? challenging the president to sign a pledge, basically a promise don't, don't you to have the America talking about whether or not campaign. Ritchie's stupid? Well, were you aware that several news organizations have been trying to obtain Governor Ritchie's transcripts from the University of Florida? See? They get to, to say, I, there. he's smart, Ritchie's stupid, right. without actually saying Moderates are talking about bolting the party. Nobody's bolting the party. It was an honest mistake. Summit on bipartisan cooperation. I can bring it up, but it'll get laughed out of the room. Why? It's an election year. We want to be partisan. We're trying to beat them. What about a Republican appointment or a promotion? We've got Ainsley Hayes. I'd make her visible right now. Yes, sir, that's a good idea. I need to see Ainsley. She's on vacation. When's she coming back? Next week. Mm, Not so much, no. Yeah, we got to post a response to someone. It's a bad idea. Why? You don't know these people. Neither do you. Oh, yes, I do. <laughs> Please don't do this. Sit down. This is going to blow up in his face. This is, yeah. Josh, 
Lemon Lemon. Don't say that. Oh, man. Don't. You sure you want to sign off like that? It's playful. Is this tie all right? Oh, yeah, he's happily into it. This necktie does go with the jacket. Oh, baby, let's talk landmines. Yeah. <laughs> Laura Dern playing the U.S. Poet Laureate? It's a big shot he's taking here, yeah. 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 She's lovely. Me. She is. Sam, say hello to the newly minted United States Poet Laureate, Tabitha Fortas. Hi. <laughs> yes, indeed. We've invited the press. We've shined our shoes. You gotta sign the landmine treaty, Tabitha. Whoa. <laughs> what happened to the nuance of diplomacy? You know who hasn't signed it? Us and Cuba. You know who initiated it? Us. So there are 900,000 North Korean soldiers in the DMZ, and the only thing stopping them from walking into South Korea and about a million landmines along the border. If you voice your disagreement at a party in your honor, then yeah. it's a gigantic deal, which travels the 63 feet right to this office. Another way you write. Wow. Ask her out before she goes. Yeah, Toby. That was an opening. Toby, she likes She you. just called you cute. Yeah, he was calling him stupid. How's his mood been the last few days? Has he regretted it? He hasn't been able to feed or bathe himself. Huh? If we want to be energy independent, if you've been relying too long on foreign oil, what's wrong with drilling in Alaska? Carol, would you put together a page on the environmental impact of drilling the Arctic National Wildlife Reserve? <laughs> How's the vacation? <laughs> it was 40 hours long where'd you go uh that's Help that. what'd you do capital b capital gang inside politics to say what the president isn't an elitist he respects everyone we're very interested in education in this white house so can you tell me what's wrong with the ivy league should we be discouraging parents from hoping their kids get into princeton and yale and dartmouth i will do the tv shows because i serve at the pleasure of the president but i do not want a promotion that i didn't earn nope seem to have taken my response in the spirit in which it was intended. Oh yeah. my god, Josh, stop. I think you've gone round the bend. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm dictating now. The White House can get a GAO review of anything it wants without posing a threat to the separation of power. The President of the United States requests the honor of your presence, and I'm sorry, but you show up. If you stand up in the president's face, that's going to be the story, and nobody's going to care about what you care about. Nobody is going to care. Tell the whip we want to yield all our time. While they're going in front of the cameras complaining about me making fun of Richie, the Democrats will be caucusing on literacy and tuition tax credit. A senior official in the communications office of the Richie campaign there said, it is. if the president thinks his candidate is stupid, he should just come right out and say so. Does it concern you that the smartest presidents have been the worst? I don't grant your premise, but nobody's saying a president needs to have a tenured chair in semiotics, but you have to have. What? Gravitas, but we know it when we see it, and Republicans tend to mock it when they do. You think I'm wrong? I do not. You posted on a website? I was communicating with the people. Really? The people on these sites, they're the cast of One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. The <laughs> moomoo wearing parliament <laughs> smoker, that's Nurse Ratchet. You open the wardroom window and climb on out before they give you a prefrontal lobotomy and I have to smother you with a pillow. Well, Wonder she was giving happen. her lecture and then towards the end, something, I don't know. It's just a poet and she got caught up in something here. There was a man in Banya Luka that I met took his son and I, uh, and a little boy, uh, hooked a piece of garbage. And when he tried to take it off the line, it blew him up. That sucks, yeah. I decided to highlight poets who were never chosen poet laureate. I saw the best minds of my generation destroyed by madness, starving, hysterical, naked. An artist's job is to captivate you for however long we've asked for your attention. If we stumble into truth, we got lucky. And I don't get to decide what truth is. I was thinking if I could get a few minutes alone with the president so that I could tell him what I saw. Yeah, we can do that. Nice. 36 species of fish, 36 land mammals, 160 different bird species. Welcome home. It'll cause pollutant haze and acid rain and all this in exchange for... Not a lot of oil to begin with. Toby mentioned to me that when each interview was over, all the interviewers wanted to talk to you about was Richie and you took a pass each time. Is it possible you saw the green light was on? There we go. He did it on purpose. <laughs> did it on purpose. purpose. Wow. Yeah. That was old school. Yes, it was. <laughs> go knock him dead.
it was definitely clever. Yeah, it. That's incredible. What a revelation. Yeah. I didn't know what she was getting at with whatever her thought was, but I mean, it, it has. It worked out so well for him the whole it time. It wasn't an accident. Wow. Okay. That was, that was, that was a lot of fun. Where was he shot at again? Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, not cool, but you know what I mean? Right. Um, wow. That, okay. that was. But that was. So... What a twist. Yeah, that that, that was fun. Favorite twist in the show. Right. So basically, first first off, I think uh, the whole time you're watching, I thought it was quaint that they're like, we'll talk about the campaign when the fall rolls around, like a couple of months before they vote. And I'm like, oh, sweetie, in 2023, no. the campaign is like a year, two Sorry. years long. Sorry. Yeah, so, yeah, we've been we've been in it for a while now, um, and we are ways away from a general yeah. election, let yeah. alone primaries. Um, but yeah, uh, it was a way of him to take a shot. Way before the campaign, without having to campaign, I, yeah, truly, and you know, I, I like that Toby kind of got to him a little bit. Yeah, and he chose that. Like, what? That was so smart, and was, he played it, it so yeah, well he, too. He did uh, right, right after Toby even told him, like, the light was on. Was oh, like, what? Oh, <laughs> yeah, it's it crazy. Yeah, yeah, like, <laughs> like little difference between red and green. I think he knew. It turns out he knew the difference between red and green. He knew what was going on. Um, also, the, the way they staged that opening too is they took their time with it. And they showed the first interview. Where he was, you know, talking with the reporter afterwards, you know, right. you're completely innocent. You think it's fine, and I didn't even think about the fact that he might say something by accident while he was like hot in the mic. You know, I didn't either. And so the fact that they like they make you think that it is an accident, and then on like the whole episode, the whole episode, you think it's an accident, right? Yeah, and they like, obviously go to great lengths to describe that. CJ had one heck of a week there, you know, talking to the press about it, and then now all of a sudden. I'm still kind of reeling over that, that that twist. That was really good. Yeah, the whole time I was like, it was an accident, but it seems like it was an accident that really worked out well for him. Everybody's yeah. everybody's yeah. talking about is Richie stupid? It's all chess. Yeah, it was brilliant. It, yeah. was, it, it was utterly utterly brilliant chess. Um, the the sobering thing we had towards the end with the kid that got killed by a landmine. Yeah, no, I'm I, I'm really glad that was there mm -hmm. to show the other side of it because for so much of the episode we got was. Yeah. Toby explaining why the landmines are necessary in that one part of the world. Her being so against it in their conflict without realizing there's a human cost that 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 that, that she finally lays out there. It's like these things are serious and they're dangerous. Yeah. Um yeah. Which was which was a, a really nice sobering moment, you know. Sorkin knows how to structure and write these episodes with these characters. Yeah. To to get us thinking about the nuance of some of these issues, right? The complexity sure. of so many of these issues. And Interesting enough, too, the fact that she said, I'm an artist, I don't really know what the truth is. Right. I don't know if that's, like, a commentary on, like, a lot of actual artists and, like, you know, actors, directors, sure. people that are in a certain position coming out and taking, like, a political stance, you know. Right. Maybe that's his way of saying something about that. Could be, could, sure, could not be, you know what I mean? Well, um, I think most people would agree that when you get overly preachy yes. in, a, in, yes. in a work, yep. that... Right or, or overtly political. Yeah. Sometimes you really do you cross a line. You cross it. You, you come off as ignorant. You, you yeah. You, you I, I just feel like you turn an audience off, right? Yeah. yeah. I, I I don't need to be lectured to. Um. You know. And, and, who and it feel, it feels like lesser art when you can when that agenda is so obvious. Yeah. And Aaron Sorkin seems to avoid that yeah. in this show and other works as well. Um, because obviously there's a political bent to it. Obviously he has opinions about about different issues. We all, uh, right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But it, but in, in terms of artistic expression, I think he avoids a lot of that. At least the feeling of heavy handedness, even while it might be being heavy handed. Mm -hmm. um, but you don't get that sense of it, right? I don't feel like I'm getting hit over the head with you know, tax cuts for billionaires bad, or you know, overspending on military budgets bad. Or, you know, estate tax, good. Even though that stuff is all there. He, he can get away with it, too, in a show like this. It's a show about the White House. So, right. of course, you're going to have to talk about this directly. You know, if, if this was a show about, I don't know, it was like The Office or something. Sure. You, know, you, you cram all this in there, and it's like, all right, that's a little preachy. No, for sure. And, and that it does happen. Right, yeah. The fact that this is a political show, you have to have these conversations. You definitely need to have you these have conversations. To, honestly, pick a side. Yeah, but, yeah, and a lot yeah. of things. I mean... A, a lot of it is pick a side. Like, there, there's a lot of issues. Like the drilling in Anwar we just had in this episode, right? Mm -hmm. It's an issue where it's like people don't understand the issue, mm -hmm. but there's clearly a more right position than, than wrong. To, yeah. to say that every issue has two sides is true, but to say two equal sides. Some things are very over. Absolutely. Yeah. It's like global warming, right? Yeah. Um, 
I remember John Oliver several years ago saying that the, the problem with with covering the the debate over global warming is that these 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 talk shows will have someone who a scientist who says global warming is happening yeah. and someone who comes on and says it's not. So it looks like it's a it's a fifty fifty it's debate. Debate, and it's yeah. like that's not how the debate works. Ninety seven percent of climate scientists say this is really happening in a real yeah. problem, and three percent say it's not. So it's not. So having two people arguing about it is not really showing the issue. It, it drives me nuts. It's one. It, it is. A one-sided it issue, like, right? Like you have all this evidence, and it's like it's there, right? It's it like it's there. You might you might as well have a, an astronaut and a flat earther arguing about whether or not the Earth is round. It's that's not. A, that's a fantastic comparison. Right. It, it's it's it, it's not a one-sided other. You know, you know, two valid arguments. It isn't. There is a right and there is a wrong. Um, it, but it's, it's stressing. It's, sure, it's very stressful. For but us. but honestly, but though my, my some of my favorite issues on the show are the ones where there's not a clear-cut answer, and they yeah. say that the landmines in this episode is exactly. presented in a way yeah. that. There is a, a a reason, but also a really ugly reality to it, right? Yeah. Um, the, do we still use landmines? Is that a thing? I, I don't know. I mean, obviously, if they do, it would be at that particular border between North and South Korea. Sure. I, I don't know if it, if they're still there yeah. um, because I haven't – I've read very little on the landmine debate. Yeah, I've um, um, we, we live, obviously, in, in the United States. It's not an issue that we face. There, there, there haven't been a lot of war. There have been no wars in the United States where landmines were used. Yeah. And I only mention that because there are places in the world where old landmines, people still They're get still killed. There, people yeah. still get killed by them. kids, livestock. You sure, know, yeah, uh, yeah. people still get killed by old landmines. Yeah, um, which isn't really a, a a thing we have to deal with, but that is definitely still an issue. And that should be, I mean, that should be addressed. You know, going through and trying to find fifty year old. Right. And, and, and I think they do. I think that I think there are organizations yeah. and, and and people who that's what they do is try to clean up these old landmines. But yeah. I mean, when you go back to, I mean, how many wars have we been in post 1900 where yeah. there's landmines everywhere? It's kind of a staple. I yeah, for World War One and World War Two, they were they were staples. So it's it's a and probably Vietnam and probably Korea. Oh, for sure, and, Vietnam, yeah, Vietnam. You know, all of civil wars all over the world. You know, but there have been a million conflicts since landmines have been a thing, yeah. and there probably are landmines all over the world. We just it's not something we deal with where we are, and we're very fortunate in that regard. Yeah. Um, but there are people in other places that that's an ugly reality. You have to be careful of. Oh, you know, we're very lucky. We live where we, where we do. You know? Sure. It's, I, I appreciate her character show, expressing that concern, and I obviously too. she's expressing that concern because of her own experience with it. Right. You know? um, yeah, she has firsthand experience in a really horrible yeah. way. Right. So, it's it's it really is something to think about. You know what I mean? Right. I, I like the comparison between like some things are a little murky, but some things are. Yeah, the show does those well. The show the show does both really well. I agree. Um and I and I feel like when Sorkin feels like we're talking about nuanced issues, he yeah. does a good job of, of of presenting multiple sides of all of them. I, I really do. Yeah. Uh, um I, I feel like that 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 there's that most of the arguments are ones that people shouldn't be too incredibly up in arms about. Now, there are other issues that that, that people will obviously and we've seen it in comments, right? Yeah. Uh, um guns is one that, that 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 gets people, you know, people are very entrenched on, right? Yeah. So when characters on the show say, hey, maybe everyone shouldn't have an AR-15 um, or, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever. however it's presented during the yeah. time. We we have seen a lot of people push back on, like, but protecting my family and the evil government and all that stuff. Yeah. Those are, and I'm not saying those are, are bad points. Um, I'm just saying that I feel like most of the time the show does a good job of presenting multiple sides. Absolutely. Um, and that's why that's, Ainsley's there for a lot of these things. Thank you. Yeah, exactly. Because when I said earlier, you have to pick a side on a show like this, what I meant was like the show has to pick a side. The show, yeah, for sure. But the characters, the characters do, right. A conversation. You right. Know what I mean, like present both sides fairly. And and, and I think they largely they do. do. Right. And they do. With Ainsley right. being there is, is a fantastic point, you know. Right. But you're right. Um, for the show's purposes, we have a presidential administration. Mm -hmm. And the presidential administration is going to take policy, make policy decisions. Yes. And you can't sit in, and you can't make policy decisions based on, well, all sides are valid. So we're not, <laughs> so we're not going to do anything. This is um, an it's, anti conflict show. Yeah, 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 exactly. That's, that, that's not how it works no. when you're covering a presidential administration. Every yeah. one of them has policy positions um, on, on multiple of issues. I mean, let's face it when you're voting, once you get to like the general election, you're not really voting for a person. You're kind of voting for a platform. Exactly. Yeah. Right? The, the, where, where do you come down on the military, on the environment, on guns, on a million, on education, on a million issues? Yeah. Which side do you side with? Because there's going to be one side or the other, you know, is kind of how our politics have, have gotten to now. Yeah, where it's like have it all. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. you know, and, and you're picking, you know, you're picking the side that best fits you yeah. because nobody's all one thing or the perfect. other. 
Right. Unfortunately. But at any rate. Uh excellent episode as usual. Yeah. Um this has been a really good run through this season and yeah. I've really enjoyed it. And I'm assuming we're gonna keep on doing that. Yeah. Shout out to <laughs> lemonlima.com. Yeah. Oh, I wish that was a thing. <laughs> I did we'll catch you in the next one, guys.